Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. And today I want to show you a pattern called Aura Knot by Zentangle. And the reason I want to show you this is because it's one of the tangles that has been featured in the Tangle All Around group by Alice Hendon on Facebook. And she has a list of tangles. This is her book, Tangle All Around the World. She has a list of patterns for November that are called Grata Tangles. And one of the patterns that I have seen uh, lately for this week was Aronaut. And I've struggled with it a little bit, and so I want to show you how to do it. And I um, also want to tell you that this video has failed <laughs> several times already. And um, I'm hoping that this one will be the charm. Okay, so R not is usually done with a kind of a star but it doesn't have to be a perfect star. It can have as many points on it as you want, uh, but a minimum of three. And I wouldn't go more than seven or so, but uh, I'm just gonna make a kind of a star pattern on my tile. And oops, it doesn't, again, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, that one's really weird, but <laughs> it's fine. I'm not going to start again. Okay, so the first thing that you do once that you get your points down, and mine has one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to pick one of these and let's just go ahead and pick this wonky one. And what I want to do is connect this side over to this side. Okay, so this is going to be my first aura. I have connected this point, skip that one, to that point. Now I want to do an aura along that. And this is very close to some of them that I've seen Maria do. So again, they don't have to be perfect. They are just a string for you to work with. Okay, so here's this one. And I turned my tile counterclockwise. That tends to be the way that I work. So I have turned it counterclockwise. And now this point, we want to connect at this point because we're skipping that one. And here would be where they might meet. So I'm just going to come down and make a curve. I have it meet like that. Okay. So now we're going to aura it. Hence the name aura knot. And it tends to start looking like a Celtic knot. And that's one of the reasons they named it that way. Okay, here's my another little wonky edge, and that's okay. I want this one to connect to this one. We're skipping that point. And so I'm just going to bring it down like that. And now I'm going to aura it. I'm trying to be mindful of keeping my auras about the same width, but if they're not, it's okay. I don't do perfect. I've given up on that. I'm a recovering perfectionist. And I'm going to do kind of a little curve to make that one come over. And now I'm going to do my aura. I'm also trying to remember to not lift my pen until I get to that line. I have a tendency to stop before the line that I'm going to. 
And one of the things that I've heard is look at where you're going, not where you've been. Okay, see that one where I've kind of left a space. Okay, so I've turned counterclockwise. Here's another one where I'm not connecting the lines. That's one of the things I do quite often. Okay, so this one, we are doing what they call hollowball fashion. We're going under the ribbon that's already there. And then I did it, I stopped on the line, yay, to this one, and then to this one, okay? Now I'm gonna turn counterclockwise, and I can tell that this is the first one that I did because it goes all the way across. It doesn't go under anything. That was my first aura. So I know I'm doing well. I'm gonna start again, do an aura, Stop at that line, come under, stop. You can do your pin as if you're drawing that and then put your pin down and go to the next line. I'm turning counterclockwise. Okay. Coming across here. Oop, see, I did it. Okay, stop. Counterclockwise. Just doing an aura. Counterclockwise. And my aura going under the ones that are already there, counterclockwise. And I haven't tested this to see what happens if you accidentally turn and start going the opposite direction. Okay, sorry, so there we go. We have two auras all the way around. So we're basically just gonna keep going. Here was my first one. So I think it looks pretty funny, but it's okay. Counterclockwise. And my aura. Turning counterclockwise. 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 Okay, we're back to our first one. Let's go ahead and go one more time. One. Take a deep breath. Counterclockwise. Do our next aura. Okay, so here I've come like this. I'm gonna act as if my pen was going across here. Ooh, I accidentally did it. And there, okay. Counterclockwise. And if you're turning yours clockwise, that's fine. I'm just thinking out loud so that I can remember what I'm doing. I'm gonna act as if without actually touching this time. Okay, turned, relax your hand, relax your shoulders. Okay, here we go. This one might just barely connect there. Okay, and this one, I can't see. All right, let's go back to our first one. We have one, two, three, four ribbons. This one only has three, so I know that I needed to have an aura on this one and across. Okay, so now they each have four. One, two, three, four, 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 
And I'm going to show you a little trick that I do sometimes if I have. I brought out my white gel pen. I'm just going to go over that. Oops, a little bit. Just because it bothers me. <laughs> okay, it disappears a little bit. Not all the way, but it disappears a little bit. Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to go. You could make this bigger. You could make it a little more symmetrical, but symmetrical doesn't matter. And you could add, if you had more room, you could add more patterns inside. And I'm going to fill in that last little triangle in each of these. And this one is wonky and that's okay. The important part is entangle is drawing one line at a time. Don't compare yourself to other people. It was the hardest thing for me when I first started was worrying that I wasn't as good. And then I became a CZT and I worried I wasn't good enough. And that's just all a mind game. Let it go. Okay. So now we're going to shade. And I'm just going to take... And where these lines meet, I'm just going to add a little bit of graphite along here. And that will also tend to hide a little bit of like where I didn't make my lines meet. And then I'm going to do the same thing along here. Along each one of these and actually in the center also between each one of these. Shading really makes a difference. Always the icing on the cake. And this one kind of goes back and forth. So let's just add a little extra. See how it does. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of graphite inside of this center. And I could have shown you the first one that I did that looked fairly good after I did this. But when I realized that I hadn't started my recording the way that I should have, um, yeah, it ended up in the trash in several pieces. <laughs> so it has been one of those days. This is actually, well, I did this for practice earlier today, it was my first tile after watching the video on the Zentangle blog uh, for how Rick and Maria taught it. So I did it. And then this will be the fourth time I've done it. Because uh, of either phone calls disrupting my video or mistakes that I made. It's all good. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> There's my wonky star. And you could add more patterns something else out here. Um, you could do lots of things. You could put uh, paradox out here. You could put a more organic tangle out here. Lots of things, lots of possibilities. This is your art. And when you're done with it, pick it up, hold it at arm's length and say, I've done good. I did a good job because you have. I mean, this is a nice, simple pattern, and it's just there for the relaxation. 
not for comparison. It's not a contest. Okay. Okay. I'll quit preaching. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to show you another quick one that Rick does that's really cool. I really like it. And let me get my light fixed. Here. Okay. So I'm going to do three points. Here's one. Two. And here's three. And you can make them kind of flowery like that. They don't have to be straight triangles. And so here we go. We are going to start by connecting these first ones. And I'm just going to do kind of a little curve so they meet up. And now I'm going to do my first aura. Follow the curve. Turn the tile to keep your hand comfortable. Okay, so there's our first one. I'm going to turn counterclockwise. And here's the second one. So we're going to want to connect these first. Okay, now we're going to aura. I will probably do this one in my sleep tonight. <laughs> All right. So I'm going counterclockwise. Here's my third one. I want that one to me. I'm going hollow ball fashion under to make this one look like it's meeting. And now I'm going to add my aura. And it has a little curve here, and that's okay. Turn my tile. There you go. We have that done. So your next step, what Rick does in his video, is he does now a straight triangle on each side. And I'm going to kind of aim to make these line up a little bit like there is a triangle behind this one. And then down to there. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with this one. We're going to make them meet. And then we're going to do our aura. Okay, I'm going to turn counterclockwise. Here's our next one. And I have switched to going from left to right because that's where I'm really more comfortable. I'm aiming to stop on the line instead of before it like I usually do. Turn counterclockwise. Here's our next one. We're going to connect that in the center and then go across. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to jump back down to this first one that we did. Here is the first ribbon that we made. See how it doesn't go over or doesn't go under anything. So we know that's the first one. So that's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to do another aura. Pretend that you're coming under. But don't go across the lines. Okay. Counterclockwise makes this one the next one. I'm trying to keep about the same distance on my auras, but uh, 
If it's not perfect, then that's perfect. Because <laughs> I don't do perfect. All right, counterclockwise. And here's my last one. The first one of these that I did, and I'll show you when I'm finished, I did in two colors. I've been trying to find patterns to use like for Christmas decorations. Okay, so the first one that we did is this one because this line goes all the way across. So I'm gonna start here. And do you see what I mean by this one stops and these all have a stop, but this one didn't, it goes all the way across. So that's why I'm starting there. Hopefully that makes sense. Turn counterclockwise. Here's my next one. Turn counterclockwise. Here's my last one. Because now all of these have two auras. Okay, these all have two, and the outer one has two. So where was our first one? Here. Okay, because it goes all the way across on top. So that's where I'm starting. I'm going to do another aura. Feel free to speed this up or slow it down. Back it up if you need to, to see what I've done. Okay, counterclockwise brings me to this one. Okay, counterclockwise again. Brings me to this one. Okay, so if we count, this has three, three, each of these have three. Okay, so now we're back to the outer triangle. This is the first one because it goes all the way across. So that's where I'm going to start. All right, going underneath. If you need to, follow your pin, watch it, and then put your pin down counterclockwise. Okay, so now we have three, three, and three. This should be our last one to catch up. Oh, so there you go. Hopefully I wasn't too much off the screen. So that's the same. That's what we did here, except that we had one in the center with the three kind of petals and then a triangle going through it. I think that's just super cool. And we're gonna go ahead and add the shading, basically the same way that we did the first time. And you could, since this one definitely is on top of that, we're going to add some shading here. And come across. And add a shadow here. Shading here. OK, 
Okay. And then let's do the same thing inside. Okay. And this one goes under here. All right, let's try that. Getting our tortillon, blending stump, Q-tip, whatever you've got, use your finger. In the beginning, Maria only used her finger to blend. And then they started getting the tortillons. Okay, add a little bit here. And there's enough on my blending stump that if I've missed something, I can still blend it and just kind of bring it out softly so that you don't have harsh lines. Shading can help hide a few minor oopses if you've got any. Move it there. Totally missed it there, but I still have enough graphite on my tortillon. Okay. So that one's pretty open. Um, you could put tipple inside here. You could put little um, petals. You could do just straight lines with weighting at the end. Let's see what that is. Let's do a what if real quick. So what if we went here and just put a couple of straight lines on each side. And then at the end of those lines, let's add some weighting. So kind of like a little triangle at the end. Kind of moved a little fast on that one. You can even round them a little bit if you want to. And then I would add where all those points meet, add some more graphite and now blend that out softly. Okay, so let's do that on each side. Don't be afraid to say, well, what if I do this? This was not planned. This is just something I like to do when I have something that uh, could end up making petal type shapes. Straight lines with a little bit of weighting at the end. And there you go. Soften my graphite. And let's do one more in this side. I definitely needed something else. Okay, a little bit of waiting at the end. The one thing about doing a video without Zoom and students is I have nobody to say, hey, you're going off the camera. So sorry if I did. Okay. I think this very center one, I'm just going to fill that one in. And 
I think for the very center on these others, I'm going to do like I did on the other side. And I'm going to add graphite on the inside of these, pointing my pencil toward what I'm trying to shade. Okay, same here. Don't be afraid to leave white space on your tile. Some of the favorite tiles that I see on Instagram is by a person that goes by the name Gently Tangled. Gently Tangled, if I said that right. And I just love the tiles because they're so simple. Not a lot of patterns, just a few well done pieces of pattern. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then what if on these outer ones, let's fill in this center triangle. Just add a little bit of drama. Amazing what uh, adding shading and a little drama does for your tile. There you go. So I'm going to hang my L for Langston and my B for Barbara, and another line for other B in my name, Barbara Buford Langston. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I got through this one. I'm going to cry <laughs> if it didn't work. Again, I hope that you will like the video and uh, hit the like button. Subscribe if you hadn't. Leave comments if there's something that you want me to do better in the videos. Uh, if there was a problem, I know some people have said, please zoom in, and I'm trying to do my best to do that. I am not perfect zen at gmail.com. I'm very glad that you joined me, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.